Were you good at science? Have you ever lied about your science test marks to your parents? It said that science was never about why. It's always about why not. Our scientific progress over the past century has been made possible by buildings and infrastructure. From giant satellite dishes to size of valleys to cutting edge tools to help go beyond the polar regions of the edge of the earth and our planet, the collaboration between the construction sector and the scientific world has greatly improved our view, hasn't it? To improve our understanding of the vast and complex universe, scientists are developing increasingly ambitious new tools. The job is not so easy for us, but wait! Truly great science requires decades of expensive commitment from different countries. So let's gear up and witness some of the greatest science projects that are proved to be a boon for us. National Ignition Facility, United States the National Ignition Center in California houses the world's largest laser, which is used to heat and compress hydrogen fuel to drive a fusion reaction. In an area the size of three football fields, engineers and contractors built the facility by excavating 160,000 cubic meters of soil and pouring over 55,000 cubic meters of concrete, the diameter at which the reaction occurred, capable of generating some of the most extreme temperatures and pressures are ever seen on Earth, the facility has performed more than 2,700 experiments in its 10 years of operation, expanding our understanding of nuclear reactions. The program has also progressed to ignite fusion by replicating the processes that take place inside the Sun. Research in this area will expand significantly when a $20 billion international fusion reaction is completed and put into operation in France in 2025. This mega-building project is currently one of the largest in the world and is being developed jointly by 35 countries. NIF's mission is to achieve high-energy fusion ignition. It supports the maintenance and design of nuclear weapons by studying the behavior of matter under conditions of nuclear explosions. NIF is the largest and the most powerful ICF tool ever developed. The basic concept of the ICF is to compress a small amount of fuel to achieve the pressure and temperature required for fusion. NIF is home to the highest energy lasers in the world. The laser heats the outer layer of the small plastic ball. The energy is so strong that the plastic explodes and the fuel is pushed out. This plastic has a top speed of 350 km per second and increases fuel density by about 100 times compared to lead in water. The release of energy during the explosion and the adiabatic process raises the temperature of the fuel to hundreds of millions of degrees. At this temperature, the fusion process takes place for a short time before the fuel explodes. Construction of the NIF began in 1997. The NIF was completed five years behind schedule and cost nearly four times the original budget. Construction was certified as completed by the US Department of Energy on March 31, 2009. The first large-scale tests were carried out in June 2009 and the first integrated ignition test was declared complete in October 2010. From 2009 to 2012, experiments were conducted as part of the National Ignition Campaign to achieve ignition after the laser reaches full power around the second half of 2012. After that, NIF was mainly used for science, materials and weapons research. In 2021, after improvements in fuel target design, NIF generated 70% of laser energy, surpassing the 1997 record of 67% set by the jet reactor and achieving burnt plasma. NIF uses an indirect surgical method in which a laser heats a small metal cylinder that surrounds the capsule inside. The heat causes the cylinders known as cavities to reflect energy as X-rays of higher frequency that are even more even and symmetrical. Experimental systems, including the Omega and Nova lasers, have validated this approach. NIF's high performance supports a much larger goal. The basic pellet design is about 2 mm in diameter cooled to about 18 Kelvin and coated with a layer of frozen deuterium tritium fuel. The hollow interior contains a small amount of DT gas. Extremely large telescope, Chile. The $1.1 billion mega telescope, located more than 2 miles above the sea level in Chile's Atacama Desert, is the largest optical telescope ever built. This machine will usher in a new era of astronomy by producing images that are 16 times sharper than those currently produced by the Hubble Space Telescope. Nearby is the Very Large Telescope, operated by the European Southern Observatory, which already operates as one of the largest astronomical facilities in the world, studying exoplanets to understand how entire planetary systems form. This facility is larger than the Roman Colosseum and much smaller than the existing Grand Facility. The main mirror, consisting of 798 small mirrors, has a diameter of 39 meters. Construction began in 2017 and is expected to take 8 years. 
ELT will search for exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars. This includes not only detecting planets down to Earth-like masses by indirect measurement of the wobbly stellar motion disturbed by planets orbiting them, but also directly imaging larger planets and perhaps even characterizing their atmospheres. The telescope will try to image an Earth-like exoplanet, which is possible. In addition, the ELT suite of instruments will allow astronomers to study the early stages of planetary system formation and detect water and organic molecules in the protoplanetary disk around star formation. In this way, ELT will answer some fundamental questions about planet formation and evolution. By studying the most distant objects, ELT will provide clues to understanding the formation of the first objects, primordial stars, primordial galaxies and black holes and their relationships. The study of extreme objects such as black holes will use the power of ELT to gain better insight into the time-dependent phenomena associated with various processes occurring around solid objects. ELT was designed to carry out detailed studies of the first galaxies. ELT observations of these early galaxies will provide clues that will help understand how these objects formed and evolved. In addition, ELT will be a unique tool for inventorying the changing content of various elements in the universe over time and for understanding the history of galaxy star formations. One of the goals of ELT is to be able to directly measure the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. Such measurements would have a profound impact on our understanding of the universe. ELT will also look for possible variations in the basic physical constants over time. Recognizing such variations will have far-reaching implications for our understanding of the general laws of physics. Large Hadron Collider Franz Switzerland Originally built using tunnels in the 1980s, the Large Hadron Collider sits up to 175 meters underground on the Franco-Swiss border. The underground facility now allows scientists to fire subatomic particles around a 27-kilometer ring of superconducting magnets that collide at close to high speed of light and recreate conditions just after the Big Bang. The experiments carried out here to find out the origin of the universe allow scientists to study and measure new particles such as the Higgs particle discovered in 2012 and improve our understanding of theoretical physics. The space containing only one of the detectors, in which the collision itself takes place, is one of the most complex building projects ever undertaken by mankind. Over 250,000 cubic meters of soil have been excavated. Despite the controversy surrounding the project, the project operated successfully from 2008 until 2018 when it was closed for upgrades. Like all physics experiments, the LHC aims to test theoretical predictions, in this case the so-called standard model of particle physics, and see if there are holes in them. As odd as it may sound, physicists expect to find some holes in the standard model because there are some things like dark matter and dark energy that can't be explained, well they do. The LHC resumed operations on April 22, 2022, after three years of maintenance and modernization work. Series 3 is expected to kick off on July 5th, the day after the 10th anniversary of the discovery of the Higgs boson. Scientists use the LHC to test theoretical predictions in particle physics, especially those related to the standard model. Although the standard model can explain almost any outcome on particle physics, some questions remain unanswered, such as what is dark matter and dark energy? Why is there more matter than antimatter? The LHC aims to help answer such questions. European Spallation Source Sweden The European Spallation Source, under construction since 2013, will be the world's most advanced neutron science research facility when completed in 2025. This facility is designed to give scientists insight into the structure of the atom, which could lead to discoveries useful for energy, technology and medicine, and environmental innovation. Built by a consortium of 13 countries and costing $2.1 billion, the complex will be one of the largest in continental Europe. Despite its scale, the property has a limited visual presence from the outside as significant landscaping is planned to integrate the property with its surroundings. Under the light blue umbrella, with the permission of ESS, we began our journey through the facility wearing helmets and steel-toed boots to brave the rain between buildings, tunnels and vast halls filled with state-of-the-art engineering equipment manufactured and supplied by the world we European. The group consists of people from Bridge Financiers, Research Center Nordic Investment Bank, along with the European Investment Bank and the Swedish Export Credit Corp. As we walked, enthusiastic ESS folks talked about how the researchers would use fission, a process in which a proton is directed at a spinning tungsten wheel, releasing neutrons that pass through the material under test to image its atomic structure to create an 
Processes can even be explored such as chemical reactions or batteries that provide energy to see how atoms interact and behave. This will help improve and develop new materials with applications in manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, aerospace, motors, plastics, energy, telecommunications, transportation, information technology and biotechnology. The ESS is ultimately fully funded by contributions from its member countries. For stationary operations, the national annual contribution is based on the use of research facilities. The current funding of the NIB, EIB and SEK stems from the fact that upfront costs are high. There are also contributions from various national budget processes. Therefore, financing needs can be described as bridging financing that is suitable for lenders with political agendas. Previously, the NIB signed a 7-year bridging loan of 100 million euros for the construction phase and a 23-year loan of 30 million euros for the construction of the ESS campus through a loan to SKR Spalation AB. In May 2021, NIB and European Spalation source Eric signed a 50 million euro 8-year loan agreement for the commissioning of a neutron research facility. On 28 May 2009, seven countries announced their support for placing the ESS in Sweden. In addition, Switzerland and Italy state that they have majority support for the site. On 6 June 2009, Spain withdrew Bilbao's bid and signed a cooperation agreement with Sweden, supporting Lund as the main site but with development work on the main components taking place in Bilbao. This effectively establishes the location of the ESS. Detailed economic negotiations are currently underway between the parties involved. Hungary also reluctantly decided to support the ESS in Lund on 18 December 2009, thereby withdrawing Debrecen's offer. Serum Institute India Serum Institute of India was founded in Pune, India in 1966. The company manufactures immunobiological products which are imported into India at high prices. Among the first mass-produced products of the Serum Institute of India were tetanus, antitoxin, snake venom, DPT vaccine and MMR vaccine. The company's product line has been expanded to include various types of vaccines against bacterial or viral infections, combination vaccines, influenza vaccines, and meningococcal vaccines. In addition to vaccines, the company also produces anti-sera, blood plasma, and hormone products. Since 2014, vaccines produced by the Serum Institute of India have been used in international immunization programs managed by the World Health Organization, UNICEF, and the Pan American Health Organization. Currently, Serum Institute of India is managed by the Poonawala Group and is involved in research, development and manufacturing. The company's first international acquisition in 2012 was Bilthoven Biologicals, a biopharmaceutical company in the Netherlands. In 2016, the Serum Institute of India, with support from the US-based company Mars Biologics from the University of Massachusetts Medical School, developed a fast-acting anti-rabies agent, rabies human monoclonal antibody, also known as Rabies Shield. By 2020, the company is the world's largest vaccine producer by several doses produced, producing approximately 1.5 billion doses doses of vaccine annually. The products developed to include the Tubervac tuberculosis vaccine, Poliovac for polio and other vaccines for the child immunization program. With its apparent simplicity, this building plays an important role in disease prevention in 150 countries around the world. Since opening in 2019, the 185,000 square meter became the world's largest enterprise for the production of vaccines with an annual production capacity of 500 million doses. The recent expansion of the laboratory, which currently manufactures 22 different vaccines, has increased its production capacity to 1.5 billion doses per year. As the laboratory strives for approved compliance with US and European vaccine regulations, the facility is likely to play an important role in the production and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines when the complete clinical trials. The Serum Institute of India has also reached an agreement with Novavax to manufacture Novavax's NVAX CoV-2373 vaccine for India and other low- and middle-income countries. The company also manufactures the Sputnik V vaccine in India in collaboration with the Gamaleya Research Institute of Epidemiology and Microbiology after receiving approval from DCGI. On 13 July 2021, RDIF issued a press release stating that SII will start producing Sputnik V cans in September 2021. They aim to produce more than 300 million doses of vaccine in India annually. So, we already know that technology, medicine and biological research have advanced at a dizzying pace over the last 100 years. 
Many of the concepts now considered iconic representations of scientific innovation, such as computers and space travel, simply did not exist in the early 20th century. It took a lot of work and a lot of money to make great progress. So much money, right? While the scientific goals of these projects are important, their mundane benefits are just as global megascience projects often involve cross-border cooperation between teams of competent researchers. Through cooperation, participation and supply of parts for this huge project, India will be positioned as a major player in basic research. In addition, these projects can create new opportunities for cooperation between industry and universities and improve the country's science. Moreover, these projects have the potential to create new avenues for academia-industry collaboration and enhance science in the country. Science has always been a way to face reality with logic and stats, isn't it? So these mega-projects are ready to make our life easier and the mechanism much less tangled.